works. Here we go. Okay, so it's now recording. I will hand over to Raza to uh, kick us off in our first webinar. Uh, thank you, Trisham. Um, I am I'm very excited to welcome all of you uh, to our first uh, webinar hosted by the Career Guidance for Social Justice blog. And we have a distinguished panel uh, this afternoon. Uh, I would like to first introduce the panelists. Dr. Trisham Holy, who is a professor of Inland Norway University of Applied Sciences. Dr. Ronald Sultana, Director, Euro Mediterranean Center for Educational Research, University of Malta. Dr. Um, uh, Marcella, um, Institute of Psychology, University of Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil. And last but not the least, Dr. Anna Bilon, University of Lower uh, Sicily, Poland. So I would like to welcome all of them um, to this. Uh, wonderful uh, 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 webinar. Uh, just a brief introduction of the Career Guidance for Social Justice, how this came into being. Uh, the Career Guidance and Social Justice site was created following the publication of Career Guidance for Social Justice and Career Guidance for Emancipation. Uh, uh, Career Guidance for Social Justice, wordpress.com. It has served as part of the promotion of these two books but has also housed opinion pieces, essays, resources, and materials inspired by and in tune with the books. The site is now building on the ideas contained within the books and act as a space for the community of people interested in career guidance and social justice to share ideas. It is also a place to collect examples of practice and reflections on those practices. The site is aimed at all practitioners and researchers who are involved in delivering, researching, supporting, and theorizing career guidance. There is no single ideological or theoretical line that defines the site. Rather, all materials posted on the site demonstrates a concern with social justice and have a clear relevance to career and career guidance. So before I start, I would like to uh, request the distinguished participants to kindly um, mute their, um, their mics and have their cameras on. And if you have any questions, please use the chat option. Um, we will have the, we'll be having a very engaging uh, dialogue for about 45 minutes. I'll be raising some uh, thoughtful questions to the distinguished panelists. And I will request all the panelists to share their perspectives. So we'll, cut, we'll start off uh, from Dr. Trisham Puli. Uh, if you can introduce yourself um, uh, to the audience and say how you got interested in the idea of career guidance and social justice. Um, hi, well, yes, I'm. Tristram Hooley, I, I work, uh, sort of split my time between the UK and Norway, where I'm, I'm a professor. And I have been, well, I suppose I've been very interested in social justice all of my life in, in different ways and thinking about, you know, politics and community and what our world should be like and how I want things to change in the future. I think that's something that I've always been interested in. And I fell into career guidance uh, by accident, really. It wasn't something that I thought I, I was, well, it wasn't something I really knew a lot about. But I, I ended up working in it. And I suppose I felt initially a little bit uncertain about whether this was the right place for me. It seemed very focused around, uh, I was working in a university, very focused around turning students into what employers wanted them to be. And, and that was something I initially, I think, felt a little uncomfortable about, the idea that we were sort of pushing young people to change themselves and form themselves into, into what the economy needed. And, but the more I explored this, the more I thought about it, the more I realised that there was actually the potential to do quite a lot of, uh, of other things with this activity, because we were asking people to think about their futures, we were asking people to think about how they want, saw their lives going, what they thought their... their talents were how they wanted to apply them in society and this seemed actually something that that perhaps chimed with some of the things that I was interested in in social justice and so I, I started thinking about that and really um, did a lot of thinking and not a lot of really figuring out what the answer was for quite a long while um, and and then I met Tony Watts and then Ron Sultana through Tony Watts and and they gave me a lots and lots of ideas and then I started working more with Ronald and with Rhea uh, Thompson and, and then with many other people here. And I started to realize there were quite a lot of us all thinking similar things and, and, and starting to figure out what, what is this that, that uh, career guidance, what is, what is the role of career guidance 
in terms of its relationship to the world and making the world a better place. And that's really, I think, how I got here. So that's me. Yeah, thank you, Trisham, for sharing your valuable insights. And Dr. Roland Soldana, if you can share your insights on how you came into career guidance and social justice uh, and your, your interest in this um, very fascinating field. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, this opportunity to speak with you all. Um, I guess my start, my, my, my early journey into career guidance and counseling was rather more the desire to help people on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, I was very interested in psychology, very interested in, in counseling, and uh, really admired some of the counselors I had come across in my own country and wanted to be like them, kind of having a positive impact and influence on others. So initially, it was a very kind of humanistic and liberal kind of approach to the field. And then I was lucky enough to do a PhD on career guidance and career education when I was in New Zealand. And it was there that I suppose I became much more politicized, looking at class, gender, ethnicity, and the impact that these structuring aspects of our life had on our experience of life. And it was there, I think, that the, the, the commitment to theorizing about social justice, I think I've always been committed to social justice, but um, from the perspective of using very often Marxist or neo-Marxist theories, feminist theories, in order to understand what's happening around us. Um, this was a very important experience for me, becoming conscientized about the situation and how power is wielded in society. And I think of career guidance as just one other area that as a citizen, I can commit to in order to further the agenda for social justice. Thank you for sharing that. Now we will be, uh, we are very fortunate that today, this afternoon, we have perspective from different continents. So now we will go to South America and, and Dr. Marcella, if you can share your perspective from, um, from South America. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for inv inviting me to this important webinar. And uh, I am a professor, researcher, and uh, doctoral supervisor at the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, a South America, Latin America country. And I also coordinate a career counseling service. And uh, in this career counseling service, I, we assist uh, all about 20% uh, of people that we assist are unemployed, low qualified, and vulnerable people. And uh, the main reason that I, I I start to think about career guidance, also justice is, is that why I live and work in a in a country uh, that uh, that uh, uh, career development of most people is characterized by informal discontinuous trajectories and not restricted to having employment. So uh, uh, I uh, I am challenged by the, my uh, challenge generated by living acting and researching in a context marked by social inequality, working informality and vulnerability. That's quite different from the context in which the mainstream theories of career guidance and counseling field have been produced. And uh, I think, and I believe, and it's my hope that uh, we, could, we, we could expand research intervention for the entire population, not for the right qualified people, some, some theories or some practices are, are, are addressed to this, to this kind of people. It's important, but I think it's not enough. So we have to, to expand the, 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 the career guidance and counseling for, for our people. For me, in my, in my, in my day life, I, I, and nowadays, because of pandemic and our socioeconomic crisis, I, I meet one, two, three people persons all, uh, on the streets asking me for money, asking me for food and asking me for jobs. And uh, it's, 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 it's impossible to not uh, be touched about that and, and try to, to, to use my, my professional uh, activity to, to, to help this kind of people. And that's why I, I got interested in, in, in career guidance and social justice. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Marcella for sharing your perspective. And I like to, it's great to see so much of uh, our conviction 
from all the distinguished panelists. And last but not the least, Dr. Anna from Poland is joining us and she'll be sharing her perspective and how she came into career guidance and social justice and her view of Dutch. Well, hello everyone. It's really nice to be here today. So thank you once again uh, for the over to the organizers for inviting me here. And um, I work at the University of Lower Silesia here in Poland, and I am involved in research on social activism and career guidance and adult education. So these are my main my main uh, areas, and I think that there are too many reasons for being interested in social justice and career guidance, for me at least. Um, I've been living in a post-Soviet or rather post-socialist country, which means that I had a really great opportunity to see uh, how neoliberal paradigm operates in society. I could observe how uh, social change and political social change and economic social change can uh, impact uh, on uh, people's lives. And I saw uh, a lot of unemployment uh, in Poland after political transformation. And I, what I want to stress is that before uh, po political transformation, the phenomena of unemployment was not um, known for Polish people. So I saw a lot of unemployment, uh, social growth of social inequalities, I saw that some Polish businesses couldn't compete with global um, businesses and global companies. And I, in generally speaking, I saw a lot of um, impacts on our society, impacts of uh, neoliberal hegemony. So at some point of my life, I've asked myself why I can see this in my society, in my own country. And it's turned out that I am not interested in the economical aspect, but I saw that one of the most important dimension of this situation is the labor market. So I've asked myself how I can um, help people, how, how can we help people with this difficult situation? And I decided to study career guidance and education. And then I decided that it's not enough for me and I've studied philosophy. So I would like to say that for me, it was a kind of um, natural tendency to ask uh, about, um, about the meanings and senses of people's activities and social activities and the senses of, um, of, of practices, social practices. And of course, combining this, I can say that um, social justice was a kind of my natural uh, consequences of um, those questions, the, my interest in social justice. And uh, what I want to ask also is something like Marcelo said, that uh, living here in Poland at this moment makes almost impossible not to ask issues about social justice when we see the Ukrainian situation and the Russian aggression into Ukraine. So. Yeah, it's a kind of natural thing for me. Thank you very much for sharing um, your valuable perspective on different continents. Now getting into the uh, uh, discussion of, of a dialogue, what, what are the most important issues that we can focus on in regards to social justice at, uh, at the present? Just to be more focused as we move forward in this in this webinar. So any, any one of the panelists can, can share that what are the present issues on social justice that we as a, um, uh, as a community can uh, can focus on? Um, I mean, I can start. I mean, and it's a pretty broad one that I'm going to throw in, but I feel that the global economy is in a very fragile and vulnerable state. I think we had a, a very major shock to the global economy in 2008. We then had another one uh, with COVID, and we, we are now experiencing a kind of third very major shock with the invasion of Ukraine and the exclusion of Russia from the, the global economy. And I suppose the kind of orthodox opinion would be these shocks come, sometimes things are, are bad, sometimes things are difficult, but ultimately things will kind of go back to where they were before. But the problem is that, that things, there, there's not really a before to go back to. What we mean is that things, the economy will go back to the sort of state that we were in in the 1990s. 
then certainly that's not desirable for everyone and 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 it seems quite unlikely to me so what i think we're we're dealing with is a very substantial shift in the political economy of the world and what direction that is going to go in is going is very unclear i mean it, it could go in all sorts of directions but what is very clear to me is that individuals in their lives are going to have all sorts of trouble dealing with that. They're going to have to figure out how they're going to put food on the table, how they're going to heat their houses, how they're going to live their lives. And in that period, having someone to talk to and someone to help you, which is what career guidance is about, thinking about how you can manage your work, your learning, your life in that kind of uh, complex transition, seems to me very important. But it's also, I think, true that, that many of the strategies that career guidance has traditionally used have not always been, were unlikely to be affected if we're seeing a very fundamental change. And so we're you know, simply being adaptable is probably not going to be enough. So that's why I think I've come to the sense that career guidance, of course, has to help people manage, it has to help people adapt, it has to build people's resilience, but it also has to help them to think about how they can exert influence and change on the world around them so so that would be the sort of big issue that i would i would highlight i think thank you uh thank you trisham for sharing that um dr sultana if you'd like to share your perspective on what are the present issues in regards to social justice at the moment well i mean i would echo what tristram has said and particularly this increasing gap between the haves and the have-nots and the rise of the precariat who have to deal with so many um, disadvantages in their lives in order to bring, bring food to the table sometimes even, um, and having a decent work life, if at all. Um, I also think that the climate crisis is something that we have to keep in mind, uh, because I think it has major implications on the way we think about work, we think about, you know, the um, aspirations that we might have from life, it requires us to rethink what normal is, and it requires us to perhaps um, look at some central issues within the area of work, including the work, our work ethic, for example. So I think that the climate crisis is a major challenge to a lot of the things that we're doing in career guidance, and perhaps we're not doing enough to tease out, to unpack the implications that there are for our field. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Dr. Anna, if you would like to share your perspective of what are the pressing issues of social justice at the moment. Well, of course, I agree with my colleagues, with Ronald and Tristram, but what I could add is that for me, uh, what is also extremely important is to, 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 to think of, um, of, of the issue of on how career guidance could contribute for the fight for democracy and liberty. I think that our democracies are in real clear crisis. Uh, and I think that this is also a really important topic for us. And maybe, maybe a little bit radically speaking, but maybe we can also think of the social justice in terms of um, anti-capitalist or post-capitalist uh, education. So something, um, what I want to stress is maybe, maybe for career guidance and uh, for social justice, it would be really important to think, how can we imagine another economy, another society? Um, so something which is maybe big and maybe unrealistic a little bit, but still valued for, you know, looking for some inspirations of how we can improve um, the labor market situation in many countries. So this is what I could ask. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Anna. For sharing your uh, insights on the on the pressing issues of social justice at the moment, uh, uh, Dr. Marcella, if you can share your um, insights on the pressing issues of social justice at the moment. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I mentioned I will mention four four issues, four big issues. I, I think the first one is individualization of life, uh, grounding on neoliberalism and entrepreneurship. That said uh, that we. Now we are responsible for our social protection. We are responsible for, for, for our work. And uh, I think that the most part of people in, around the world uh, uh, do not have this, this kind of the, the, 
uh, the, the person do, does not have condition to, to do that uh, without the, 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 the support of the state. I think that is, that is the main point of the neoliberalism. I think it's, it's, it's important to do that. The second point is the second issue is the prevalence of economic development upon social development. And the, the idea that the productivism and, and, and the, the idea the economy is, is the most important thing in, in our world. Uh, I think we, we need to, to defend the, the basic human rights and the Kahyaganians can, can do properly this. And uh, the third world is the cultural prejudice and uh, represent by difficult to deal with different in some ways uh, between developed and developing regions, between different countries, between different ethnicities between uh, a, a, a standardized way of life and different ways to be and live regarding sexuality, gender, religion, social class, and, and, and many others. And the last one is the socioeconomic inequalities. I think we, we are generating uh, two antagonist groups uh, of people in the world. Do, those who deserve rights, that would be the full members of society, and those who must be content to work without rights no full members of society. And I think that's not the, uh, and, 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 and that's not the, 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 the best way to, 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 to build a world. And then we need to, 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 to struggle uh, against this tendency and say that everybody uh, needs to be full members of society. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing those. Uh, I would like to uh, request the uh, participants if they have any questions, feel free to mention in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, moving on, uh, what good examples have you seen of career guidance acting as a focus for social justice in practice? If um, any of the uh, panelists would like to share the insights. Will you go first, Tristan? Again? <laughs> on mute, once again. Um, yes, so, uh, so we've so Ronald and I, with, with uh, Ria Thompson, we've just published an article in, um, in the NYSEC journal. And in that, we talk about an idea that we've been sort of developing for a while, which is the, the five signposts towards um, a socially just career guidance. And, you know, we give a, num a number of examples in there of, of what might each of the signposts look like. So our, our signposts are, we should build critical consciousness. We should help people to think about um, what they, uh, to, to understand some of the things we've been talking about so far, understand the issues that are affecting their lives, not just on a personal level. That we should name oppression where we see it, that we should uh, question what's normal, this idea of sort of criticism of what's normal. Um, thinking about not not to say that everything that that people find normal or are used to in their life is is a bad thing, but to say that actually there's there's a, a value in in interrogating that and thinking about that and so on. Um, to encourage uh, people then to work together, to come together collectively, to do what um, what Ria talked about as a, as kind of career guidance and communities and this idea of community. And then to work at a range of levels, so to be able to to both work individually and help people on an individual level, but also to reflect back at the system. And, and I mean, there are lots of examples. I'll just I'll just choose one, and there's probably someone in this room who knows more about it than I do. But but in Sweden, uh, they've been doing a lot of really interesting things around this one, which is about criticizing what's normal or thinking about what's normal, developing this idea that they call in Sweden norm critique. And a lot of that is focused around gender. It's, it's really about encouraging young people to look at the representation of different occupations and to think about how they're represented and who is normally represented as doing those occupations. So is it normally, is this, a, is this a boy's job or a girl's job? And really then starting to think about that, to challenge that idea, to encourage people to question those sorts of ideas. And so rather than just starting from a position that's, I suppose, a kind of liberal position where you say, well, what would you like to do with your life? You start from a position where you say, actually, one of the things that career guidance brings to people is a, is a form of kind of critical reflexivity. We encourage people to question some of the things they want, to think about some of the things that they believe and, and potentially to, to move to new ideas, and new beliefs that might inform their life journey. 
So, so that would be an example that, that I've seen that that's happens in a lot of Swedish secondary schools, but also primary schools as well, where there's this sort of agenda to try and get young people to think about their, you know, their assumptions about particularly gender and different jobs. Uh, thank you, Trisha, for sharing that uh, very uh, thought-provoking and sharing that link as well. And I'm sure the uh, the participants from all over the world that are logging in today with, will love to read this and will have further discourse and dialogue on it. Uh, Anna, if you can, Dr. Anna, if you can share your good examples from the Polish uh, Polish context. Well, first of all, I really think that uh, actually each practice. Uh, can have a kind of contribution towards, you know, uh, social justice, really depending on the concept of social justice that we have. But I see some really interesting initiatives here in my country. And I think that those initiatives are really related to the, um, to the new European skills agenda, paradoxically, um, because uh, the implementation of new European skills agenda here in Poland is really related to the, to the I attempt to create a kind of uh, integrated career guidance policy. So I see, uh, at least in my region, that some local governments has have decided to create a kind of organizations that will be responsible for career guidance uh, in particular regions. And I think that this is really great idea. Um, since we in Poland, we didn't have actually those integrated policies. Um, and I, I think that this is an example of introducing the quality to career guidance here in Poland. And also this is a kind of example of trying to give people equal access uh, for career guidance um, here in Poland. So yeah, this is an example from the level of policy. Um, and I really think that policy is needed and important if we think of career guidance and social justice. So yeah, I see also good examples in policy. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anna, for sharing that. And I agree that access is key to amplify and to the greater, greater impact on Dr. Soldana. If you can share good examples from your respective country and your region. Well, a lot of the work that I've been doing over the past several years has been on career education, looking at career curricula within schools, career learning, career development, um, teaching within, you know, different educational institutions. And what has been encouraging is an increasing number of these programs actually have a very critical perspective on the world of work. While before I tended to see, you know, um, what Tristram was referring to, was referring to earlier, especially these employability programs, trying to get young people to fit into the world of work as it is, there's an inc increasing number that question the world of work. They also encourage a certain, you know, utopic vision. How can it be organized differently in such a way that there is more equity, that it's um, it helps people flourish rather than become victim to um, all, all sorts of exploitation. Um, so that I find very promising. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, there's quite a, a, a number of interesting um, examples of this from in Scotland, for example, in my own country that people can refer to. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um... And I would now like to request Dr. Uh, 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 Marcella to share his good examples from South America. I think uh, the first place we, we need to expand and diversify the attended public. And for doing so, we need to, uh, to expand and diversify in our practices. And I think that the, the, the best way or the uh, very interesting way to, in doing that is uh, considering the existing social community resources and uh, not uh, not uh, uh, propose something for 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 example vulnerable people and try to to build something together the, our our practice together in a in a uh, i name it this this intercultural way and i, I think that there's a better strategy to 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 to, to build or to, to rebuild our, our field and, and and include the knowledge of the, the 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 people that we are we are offering some assistance or something like that, and uh, uh, in, in Brazil we are trying to approach 
and the, 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 per, the peripheral zones of the, 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 the big cities. And uh, we, 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 we include and incorporate and try to, 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 to rebuild our practices, uh, 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 inspire in these uh, socio community resources, and try to do something that involve uh, all, 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 the, the, all people of this, this community, not only a, a, a practitioner that, that, uh, that, that uh, uh, goes to a community and said, oh, I, I, I work with Kaja Gardens and we need to do this, 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 that, 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 that to, to, to have success in the, the labor markets. No, we need to, what's your life? What's your background? What's your plans? And how can I help you? And how can we build something to, to, to help you? I think we need to, to approach this community here, what this community build as resources and strategies and try to rebuild our practices, uh, inspiring this in this, uh, pre-existing social resources. That's it, right? in, in a general way. Uh, thank you for sharing that. We have a very um, thoughtful question uh, in, the, in the chat. Uh, the panel have described major issues for career guidance schemes to operate within a narrow scope, often as a subsection of education. It is often sidelined in public policy, which gives priority to bigger social concerns. Example, mental health. Um, Homeless, uh, home, homelessness, uh, poverty. I'll be interested in the panel views on this. So if any one of the panelists can share their insights on this very uh, thoughtful question. Yeah, it's a good question, isn't it? Um, I mean, it's, uh, I think the problem we have is that when we start to think about these bigger issues, I think a lot of practitioners quite rightfully throw up their hands and say you know we can't even cope with the small issues that we're dealing with at the moment we don't have the resources we don't have the time and, and so on um i mean i i think one of the one of the i suppose the avenues of social justice which which i have acted on is is to argue for career guidance and to argue for that as a profession and to argue for the professionalization of the area and for increased funding for it and so on. So, I mean, I, I don't think the, the kind of discussion we're having here today can't operate outside of the confines of the realities in which people, you know, people actually practice this work, which is often, you know, very suboptimal. Um, so I think we have to be arguing that career, well, firstly, that career is an important theme. It's part of everyone's life. As Marcelo often says, everybody deserves a career. Everybody should have the right to a career. That's a social justice claim in itself. But then in order to, to make that claim, we have to say, well, everybody also then is gonna need help with this. And that means career guidance, and it means career guidance lifelong, and it means career guidance for everybody, regardless of who you are and so on. And so I think that, that argument has got to be an important part of it but, but i think we also have to recognize some some need to kind of critically re-examine our, our paradigms and practices within what's what's open to us and think about whether there are there are new ways that we can practice that might allow us to more effectively kind of uh, challenge some of the issues that people are experiencing in their lives and i think that's what the social justice uh, sort of uh, theorists and, and group and people who are writing about this sort of thing are trying to do is to try and think about well how might we do this activity differently but we certainly need to be doing it more and for more people as well thank you thank you Trishan, for sharing that we have another question in the chat i'm interested in how career practitioners can set boundaries so that they can um, they can implement the five pillars and call out oppression and push for change etc but to do so in a way that keeps our emotional load manageable and keeps us healthy? It's a great question. So if any of the panelists would like to share the insights on this. So I wonder whether, Marcelo, I wonder whether you've got something to say about that as you've done a lot of work with very marginalized people I just wonder how you manage that issue around your, um, yeah, like your, yeah, looking after yourself, your own emotional and, and sort of mental health and so on. 
yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I may, I may say that uh, that uh, uh, some people are in the in the level of surviving, and uh, the, 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 the 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 emotional load is <laughs> is always right, 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 and uh, and uh, we need to 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 include this this dimension of life, the the emotion dimension, but uh, we need to to or we're trying to 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 open up space to to people and uh, build some uh, i think uh, to, to build some new places in the world to 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 try to do something like a social repositioning and trying to do that uh, there is something more for me in society and then uh, when i when i when i i, I think I, I, when i see that there is something more for me in society i think the 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 the, the emotional dimension and and can goes together and uh, and uh, i think this this these two things can 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 work together and uh, the, i might say that the the, 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 the vulnerable people suffers a lot and I think for suffering a lot, they 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 have some uh, uh, some uh, strategies. They they develop some strategies to deal with this. I think uh, that we we need to 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 revert this this trend, and 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 because people are, that's the way that life is. Uh, I think I hear guidance that, that can can say or can try to say to people. Don't know. That's not the way that life is. We can do your life in another way, in another way, and and and, and not it's not just a discourse because it's it's easy to 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 to, to, to speak this. But how can I do this? How can I do this? And I I think if we can we can offer something like that, I think the the, the emotional dimension uh, goes goes together and can and can uh, get better. Uh, with our praxis or our, or our assistance and something like that. It's not an easy task. It's a very, very difficult task because uh, it's not a task that depends on us, it depend on, on, on the social development, depend on the economic conditions, depend on something like that. But I can, we, can, we can do our, our part. I think in a general way, uh, I, can, I can think about that. Uh, Dr. Anna, if you'd like to um, uh, share your insights on these two questions that I raised. Yes, of course. And first of all, I really think that there is not a huge division between those great issues and those issues related to practice in a way that if we all agree that we assign for career guidance a role of being a contributor to social change, we need to we should we should actually agree that those big questions questions and those big issues are important for us just to think how we can change the practice how we can um, how we can provide a new approaches and how we can think of new theories in career guidance because if we i, I see that um, if if we want to career guidance be a contributor for for to social justice we need to think of changes at two levels. One is really related to practice and one is really related to theory. And I really think that um, we should think of education of practitioners, another education, education that is really based and, and, and focused on social change. I've done some research here in Poland and it, those, this research was focused on the perception and meaning that um, career guidance practitioners give to social justice. And I, and I think that uh, it was really difficult for me to to, to, to think of this of the results because it's turned out that career guidance practitioners here in Poland they actually avoid uh, speaking and thinking of social justice and this is why I think that we should ask a big question and should focus on education and should focus on education um, and changes in policy and um, yeah and yeah this is something that was I wanted to add uh, to the first question. Mm. And I think that this is also a kind of answer, a part of the answer to the question 
uh, asked by Emma, uh, I mean the question uh, that uh, about the uh, possible innovative and disruptive approaches. I really think that uh, so that to inv uh, invent and create new and innovative um, approaches, we should think of the theory. We, we, we really should think of, uh, for example, uh, new theories focus on social change. We should think of uh, real agency, not this psychological concept of the sense of agency. We should think of the corporative agency or collective agency. And uh, yeah, I think that we should look for alternative ways of understanding labor market and society. Uh, what I want to say that maybe we can look for the um, post-capitalist you know, concepts, how we can organize in another way labor market. And when we, when we will understand and when we, when, we, uh, when, we, when we will analyzing those kind of issues, then we can create some kind of uh, practice new models and concepts for practice for practice i think i think uh, thank you dr anna coming towards the conclusion of this uh, webinar i would now like to request all the panelists what do you hope for over the next 5 years as a way of looking forward so trisham if you can start gosh um well <laughs> um I'm just very quick. I mean, somebody's been raising this point about how do you look after yourself if you're doing this? And, and I think we are asking a lot. And I think we have to recognize we're asking a lot from people. And I think one of the things that we need to be really careful about is we're not what we sort of describe as responsabilizing people. We're not saying if you as a practitioner don't solve, you know, don't, don't, don't stop the war or don't, don't um, solve the economic crash, then it's your fault. Of course not. Um, so, so, you know, and then we have to think about, well, how can we help people manage? How can we give people solidarity? How can we give people a chance to have sort of a reflexive engagement with what they're, what they're doing? And we probably have got more ideas on that than we've got time to go into. But I think, for me, the most important thing is that, yes, this is asking careers practitioners to take on a lot more, but it's not, it's, we, it's not blaming them. It's not saying if you don't do it, you personally failed. And I think we have to be really careful about that because I think that's one way to read what we're saying, which which ultimately is going to exactly as somebody was suggesting lead to sort of burnout and so on. I mean, like there's probably in terms of what I hope for the next five years, I mean, in terms of this agenda, I would like to see practice um, developing much more practice and also us, us as researchers being more able to, to observe and catch practice in this area i think we've written a lot of theory we've got a few good examples that we're able to show to show that this isn't completely kind of mad it can happen but i think what we haven't really done is grounded a lot of these theories in, in sort of widespread practice and, and that's something that i think we'd like to do i mean of course you know in the in the with the bigger picture you know it, it's i would like to see you know some pretty radical and fundamental changes to to the world but but um you know in terms of our world then i would like to see the growth of this as an agenda and i would like to see more practitioners feeling that it was something that was helpful and that they could work with thank you thank you for sharing that and dr sultana if you would like to share your hope for the next five years yeah well very much in the same direction that tristram has been speaking about i think what we have managed to do in our work Tristram, Rhee, Anna, Marcello, many others who have contributed to our two volumes. We've um, strengthened a language of critique, which I think was absolutely crucial in order to move away from very individualistic approaches to career guidance and the kinds of um, challenges one has to face in life. So I think we've done a lot of good work on the language of critique. We are now at a point where we really have to develop more the language of possibility. Okay, with this understanding of the way things work and how power is wielded, what can one do? And here, I think there are two things one can say. One is that we have to be extremely careful that these micro, this, this macro um, perspectives don't um, um, discourage the practitioner. I came across a very interesting um, quote recently um, within the critical education literature. 
um, would say something like this. This is a practitioner writing to one of the best known critical educators internationally, a certain Carlos Alberto Torres, who many of you might know. And the practitioner, Mike Rose, told him this. So much of the literature I read holds up only one standard for social change, major social transformation. There's something arrogant about that, it seems to me, for it discounts the daily good work that thousands of people do to affect micro-level change, to incrementally build community. And I think this is something that I would want to highlight and emphasize, you know, that change can also come through these micro level in, um, um, efforts to incrementally build communities. And I think that that is what I'm hoping to um, see more of and perhaps documented in the um, social justice um, website, which is what individuals and groups are trying to do here and there internationally so that we get inspiration from them. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, that's a, a great insight. So Dr. Anna, if you would like to share your hope in the next five years. Well, I think that living in Poland, my, my, my next, uh, my, my biggest hope is to have peace in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, this is a kind of big issue, but it's really important. And what is also really related to our situation is that I really hope our government will be able to help those refugees that uh, are coming uh, to us from Ukraine. So I really hope that we, we will be able to find some solution to help people to integrate with our society and you know to just to just survive from this trauma so i guess that this is uh, my biggest issue and of, but my biggest one of my biggest hopes but of course i want to also have a kind of return of liberty and democracy democracy here in my country and yeah, my, 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 my biggest, one of my biggest uh, hopes is also, you know, just for the neoliberal ideology just to disappear. So it's a kind of joke, but yeah, thank I really you. hope. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And Dr. Uh, 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 Marcella, if you can share your, um, uh, your hope insights for the next five years from South America. Perspective. My hope for for the future, for the next years is, is working more and more in a collective way, not only among, among researchers, practitioners, but including everyone involved in, in career guidance and career counseling process. I think that's the, 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 the best way to, to do, to try to, to do or to, to, to change the world or try to change the world in, a, in, a, in the way of career Social justice, career guidance, social justice, and I quote uh, 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 important or the most important educator from Brazil, Paulo Freire, and, and he said, no one set anyone free. No one set himself or herself free. Men, women liberate themselves in communion. I think we, we need to work together to, to try to, to change the world. That, that, that's it. In, in all dimensions of our practices, our lives, I think that's the, the best way, as we are doing here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, uh, we are now almost towards the end of this webinar, a very inspiring webinar, the first of its kind from the Career Guidance for Social Justice blog. I will uh, now request Dr. Trisham Bully uh, to invite uh, all the um, respective participants that are logging in to contribute to the blog. Uh, it's a very uh, vibrant and a very visible blog uh, that you can, you can share your insights. So a few uh, minutes from, from uh, Dr. Trisham Bully about the blog and then we will thank the, the panelists for their time, the participants uh, for their valuable question. Um, no, I mean, I think you've said it already. We, the blog is open. We want everyone to contribute to it. One of the aims of it was to hear more from practice. Um, so people have been writing all sorts of things on it, but perhaps the most important is telling us about what they're doing, sharing resources and all of those sorts of things. But also, of course, we're very interested in opinion pieces, in, in news that you've got that might be of interest to the community and so on. So yeah, please get in touch with, with myself, with, with Ronald, uh, with, with anybody who's, there's information on the editorial board on the site. 
and send us some some things. Um, we've also got a feedback form from today, which if you would like to fill that in, that would be great as well. Um, but yeah, no, that's everything from me. Thank you for hosting us, Raza, today. Uh, thank you once again, uh, Dr. Prisham Guli, Dr. Honor Sultana, uh, Dr. Anna, Dr. Marcella, for sharing your valuable insights and to all the distinguished participants that took the time um, during this very uh, interesting time that we are experiencing all around the globe. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the webinar and I hope uh, we will continue this webinar series from the Career Guidance for Social Justice blog. Uh, stay safe, uh, stay, remain hopeful. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah.